Joining us now, we have Steve. Steve, I want to say thanks for coming down and spending a little time with us and sharing the story. So, uh, you native of Arizona? How long you been here? I've been here since uh, 1968. All right, all right. So you've been around a bit. Been around. I understand you have a somewhat disturbing story you want to share with us regarding the corrupt judicial system in Arizona. Absolutely. I was accused and uh, subsequently convicted of a crime I did not commit here in Arizona. Um, we did not have a public attorney, we had, or public defender, we had uh, an attorney. We would spent uh, quite a significant amount of money to retain him. And uh, he eventually got tired of the case before it was going to go to trial and uh, he talked me into a thing called an Alford plea, which he told me was a, a not guilty plea, which it isn't. It is, it's like a no contest. Right. And the courts, through through their corruption, uh, sent me to prison for five years at the Florence State Prison, where I spent two and a half years. Falsely accused, falsely convicted. Yes. Sir. Um, we were chatting earlier. Uh, you mentioned uh, like the judge and the attorney were neighbors. They were neighbors. They had barbecues together. And uh, they were all looking for a win for all of them, and they didn't really care what happened to me. They were just looking to get there to keep their records. Unbelievable. So I guess there's no recourse now. You get to live with this or try to live with this. Um, you've been released, obviously, but that's still going to follow you around and haunt you all this, this nonsense, right? Yes, for the rest of my life. I, um, we can't really discuss too much about it because now we have newly discovered evidence. Mm -hmm. As uh, during my parole hearing, one of my ex-wife's daughter came to the parole hearing and said that their mother was a, a liar. And uh, they told me at the parole hearing, they said, well, due to this story, we are going to go ahead and release you, but you still will be convicted if you're not prepared to stay a convicted felon. Let us know now and you can just stay here. Yeah, right. Right. So what else do you want to tell us about what you saw, what you experienced with the apparent corruption that goes on in this state? Well, some of the interesting things I found out in the judicial system, well, one of them my judge actually told me I was wearing this very suit except I had a shirt and tie on and he told me do not wear that suit next time you come before me apparently it was too nice of a suit for him to see yeah it irritated him yeah it did irritate him uh -huh. he thought I was trying to be a smart aleck or something I was just showing respect to the court right exactly I went to jury duty before and I had worn this suit right if you yes. wear shorts and a t-shirt they generally get pissed off but you wear Correct. a nice suit and you got irritated right showing respect right so right off the bat the judge has got an attitude right and the, the day that they were going to issue my sentence to me, before they even announced the sentence, I asked the judge if I could speak, and I told him I wanted to withdraw the plea mm -hmm. and go to trial because we did have the evidence. Even though I was facing upwards of 400 years in prison, we did have the evidence to beat the case. And my attorney okay. told the judge, if you, if, if you allow him to do this, I will not be his attorney. And the judge said, we're accepting your plea. You're stuck with it. And if you have to put your fingers cross them behind your back and, and say you're guilty and... So your attorney just got lazy, got tired of it, like you said, didn't want to put any more effort into it, Correct. gave you that phony plea deal. Correct. Which nine times out of ten, from what my understanding is, what they tell you up front, that plea is going to be, once you get into the system and cop that plea, it never really turns out to be that way. It seems like it's always like worse one other way or something, right? Right. Well, I, I have no idea of the verbiage of the law, what an Alfred plea meant. I, okay. I, was, I was like a lamb led to slaughter. I, okay, okay, Larry, I'll, yeah, I trust I'm you. listening to you. Yeah, I yeah. trust you. He was a very, very good attorney. I mean, he was in pretrial and everything. He, we had found lies that they had done, and, and we had them. And he says, no, you're facing too much. You have to take this plea. Wow. Do you understand his, his train of thought at this stage? You know, where was his head at? Well, in retrospect, I look back and I, and I say to myself, well, he thought if there was 99% chance of me getting an innocent plea or an innocent from a jury right. and 1% chance that I'd be found guilty, I would never see the light of day. 